Welcome everyone to this week's Bite Size Talk. If you have been here last time, you will not be too surprised about what is coming. <laughs> so this is a bit of a do-over since uh, we didn't record last time properly. Um, so with us today is Phil and he's going to talk about wave containers in workflows and also we'll talk again about a bit about Nextflow Inspect. So off to you, Phil. Thank you. I'm just going to set up my screen share. Oop. Okay, how do I resize that? Come on. There we go. Hopefully I'll do this and then I don't have to faff around moving my windows around too much afterwards. Right, can everyone see my screen? Should be the NF Core website. Yes, we can. Wonderful. Right, I'll get started. Um, so yeah, as Van said, we're kind of I'm gonna basically squish the bite size from last week or well, last time I did um into this one a little bit and also go over um some more back general background information about wave uh, containers and secure containers and what all this is and why you should care. Um, so I'm going to start off with a bit of an introduction to that before diving into the more detailed stuff, which I did in the last uh, last one. So uh, this is what I've said I'm going to talk about. So let's use that as a bit, bit of a, an overview. I'm going to start off by talking about what Wave is and what it does and why that's useful. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how Docker works as part of that, just to kind of give some context and some explanation. Uh, do a little bit of an overview of some of the nice features that Wave comes with. I won't go too much into detail. And then I'll kind of hop over into the other episode and talk a little bit about some of the command line tools that we have at our disposal, um, how these different kind of pieces fit together, and then hopefully finish up with a bit of a lead into how we might be able to use this within NF Core. Jump in if you have a question. If I go over something too fast, doesn't make sense, uh, let's make it a discussion. Um, so feel free just to wave at me if you'd like to. Okay, so let's kick off. Wave, go to secure.io. Uh, Wave is this open source software. Um, you can find it on GitHub um, and it's from Secura and it's kind of made by, by Paolo and the team behind Nextflow. Um, it is quite obscure as to what Wave does, which is kind of why I'm here today. Um, most people will have probably heard of it by this time. Um, and it's kind of like, seems clever, but it's, it does a lot of stuff and um, it's not always kind of, because it kind of works a bit by magic, it can be a little bit opaque about what's going on. So let's take a step back and not think too much about Wave right now, but think about Docker. So hopefully most people are familiar with Docker. It's this idea of kind of using containers and images to run software on your computer in a kind of sandboxed environment. And when you use Docker, you have a few different components you have running. You have a Docker daemon, which is a piece of software running on your computer the whole time that just sits in the background. Uh, if you're on Mac, you kind of start Docker and you have a little icon up on your top bar, similar for Windows and everything else. Once that's running in your command line or anywhere else, you can run Docker commands such as Docker pull, Docker run, and so on. Um, and that is what Nextflow does under the hood. When you run a pipeline with Docker enabled, Nextflow will start off a task and on that task, it will then do a Docker run command. That will then pull the image and the image is the the like the, the piece of software basically. And then it will run that image as a container on your local system and do all the computation within that container, which is that kind of sandboxed environment. So Docker daemon, Docker process, image container, four different kind of new words for uh, glossary there. Now, the way that Docker images are created are they are built up in layers. And so if you've ever written a Docker file, um, I wonder if I can find a basic one um very quickly but you you basically it's kind of like a bash script um and it looks maybe a bit like this you usually start with a from command which is like the base image to start with um and then you have a bunch of commands such as copy and run and stuff and the docker file is used when building a new container image and it's basically like a bash script but each one of these then pretty much generates a new layer in the docker image and if you go back to this base image, that one will also be compromised with different layers. And you can keep going back until the original kind of Docker image, which doesn't have any from statement. Now, this means that every Docker image you download is kind of like a, an onion. Um, and that's useful because many images will be based on the same underlying layers. So if you're starting with Ubuntu uh, or you're doing different things, then only Docker, the lo local Docker daemon is clever enough to only pull the layers which are different and each layer has its own checksum. 
Um, so where does it get that data from? This is kind of a final part. And the Docker picture is there you have Docker registries. That Docker daemon, which is running on your computer, has a local Docker registry. So that's the first thing it checks. If you tell Docker to, the Docker command line to pull an image from somewhere, or it will say, look locally and see if it can find that image and find, see if it can find that spec. And if it can, it will just won't touch the internet. Or if you tell Docker to build a new image, it will build it and then register all those layers in your local registry. If it can't find it then, it will then contact an external registry. Uh, typical registries that people will be familiar with are likely things like hub, um, .docker.com or Docker hub. So this is a registry full of loads of different images that people have pushed there. Um, another one is key.io, which is the one operated by Red Hat, Red Hat which is exactly the same. Um, I'm logged in, in here, but you can see all these are all different images built for NF core and pushed there. It's just a website which just hosts the files. So your local Docker daemon then will look to the remote registry and pull over the images and the layers and the manifests it needs. The manifest is just a simple metadata file which describes the different layers within a Docker image. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, singularity is basically exactly the same, except you don't have a daemon running locally. Uh, and instead of having all these different layers, which are kind of compiled um, at runtime, you have single image files or a SIF file, sing singularity image file. And so when you do a singularity command, it just checks locally for that file or pulls it on demand. Uh, but it's slightly less clever about all the layering stuff. Don't use as much of the same tech underneath. Okay. Docker daemon, Docker registry, all good. So what does Wave do and why do we want it? Basically, Nextflow kind of grew up with this idea of containerization and that each process typically has its own container. And that's great, but it does add a little bit of friction when you're building a Nextflow pipeline. If you go into kind of writing with instructions for writing a module, um, you'll be kind of familiar with building new modules. You'll need to kind of go through and find containers or maybe build containers. It could be write Docker files. Uh, it could be finding all these things. And you kind of have to find it for Docker. You have to find it for Singularity, to find it for Conda. And Bioconda is kind of underpins our community, but there's still quite a lot of faff. Um, and that's especially true if you need to do anything non-standard with Docker files or with uh, images which contain multiple images. At this point, it seems like a good time to mention Biocontainers. So Biocontainers is a collaboration together with Bioconda. So on Bioconda, you've got each individual package. And when you merge a new recipe into Bioconda, it's automatically built into a set of images. And these are pushed to typically key.io and registered under the biocontainers registry name. So this is an infrastructure which automatically builds Docker images every time there's a new Conda package. And it happens in that way. New package, new container. That's good, except for anything out of the ordinary. So if you want to have a pack, an image which has more than one package in, that doesn't match the build um, setup. And so then you need to do this whole process of building mold images where you request more than one image and you have to kind of do it via computing hashes, creating pull requests and waiting for that kind of slightly non-standard build process, which works, but it's not without friction. So what Wave can do then is it kind of pulls a few tricks. Um, Wave is both a piece of open source software, which you can run yourself, but it's also a service which Secura pays, uh, runs as a, as a community service. So wave.secura.io, which is an API. Um, and so what, what you can do with Wave then is you can request that an image is built. Wave is somewhere in this middle ground between these different terms. You've got Docker registries, which are basically file hosting providers where things are pushed and they sit there and they just work as a server. Um, and you have a Docker client, which is kind of requesting stuff and building stuff. Wave is sort of both of those things, or almost it sits in the middle. So what you can do is you can talk to Wave and say, I want this image with this, soft with this software or this Docker file. And Wave will look for it, and it will either return it directly from another registry, or it will build it on demand for you on its servers and return you the image. To you, you don't need to know or care whether it existed or not in the past. You just get your Docker image straight away. That's probably the key take home, take home message for all of this as to what Wave is. <laughs> so I'm going to re-say it just one more time just to make, see if I made any sense because it's quite a complex idea. Your 
local Docker image says, I want this, this Docker image, be it from a Docker file or from Conda packages or whatever. And, and I want a Docker image with these resources. And it asks Wave. Wave will return an image straight away as if it was a registry. It talks as if it was a registry. But it's not actually necessarily hosting all those files like a regular Docker registry with, but you could browse. It generates the image on demand if it needs to, or it returns it from a cache. Okay, regular wave caches stuff about 72 hours, but generally kind of always builds for stuff from scratch, unless you give it the name of an existing container, in which case it sort of acts like a proxy. So that's kind of cool. One or two little extra tricks it can do. It can do something called augmenting an image, which nothing else can really do. So there we've got our image where I talked about it being built up with different layers. And so if you imagine you say, I want this image that exists and it's got 20 layers in it and a normal registry just returns it. But what Wave can do is it can take that image and it can add on layers on top without rebuilding the whole image. It just adds an extra skin on top of the image and returns it. And if you've ever used Fusion, for example, on Secure Platform, Wave is doing that to add in the Fusion binary. And that means that we can do stuff to the container without rebuilding it every single time. We just augment it with a tiny few kind of few bytes as it's returned. So that's a kind of one of the key features of Wave. It can build on demand if necessary. It can augment images if necessary. And it can also act as a proxy uh, for registries that require authentication. So that final piece is useful if your sysadmin or someone else sets up a whole bunch of different registries, be it ECR on AWS, Docker Hub, key.io, wherever, but they're hidden behind a pass password, you can ask Wave to authenticate to those registries with, with credentials which are locked behind uh, a closed door in secure cloud. Um, and then you don't have to have those credentials or share those credentials yourself. You can do it via Wave, which works uh, using Tower as an identity provider, basically. Three features, authentication, augmentation, building on demand. That's the end of my section on Wave. Any questions? Just have a chat open. By the way, anyone can unmute themselves. So um, if you have questions, just jump in. At some point, I will put together slides with all this because I think it's easier if you do it with visual boxes and stuff and layers, but I haven't got around to actually building a slide deck. Alrighty, I will crack straight on then. Part two, that's Wave. Next, we have Secure Containers. Um, Secure Containers is what we launched a couple of weeks ago at the Nextflow Summit in Boston, 2024. And uh, it's basically like a layer on top of Wave. This is a collaboration together with AWS. And basically now we have a Wave sitting in front of our own custom registry, which is hosted on AWS. And this means that instead of Wave always keeping that cache only for 72 hours, but otherwise always rebuilding an image, um, those images once built stick around basically forever. We say five years, but that's just because that's kind of as far as we can look into the future. There's no plans to revoke that cache ever. So if I stick in BCF tools here, I can click get container. It's going to give me uh, an image, container image URI straight away. And that's because someone else has already clicked this in the past. I can copy that image and go and stick it into an XLO pipeline or run it on the command line or whatever. And if I go through to the build images, you can see actually this one was created on the 23rd of May, just a couple of weeks ago. That's kind of cool, but that's kind of the same as bio containers. What's really nice is I can add in some tools and hit get container. And now exactly the same. It's just built it on demand. Because it's the inverted model to buy containers, because it's only building images when they're requested, rather than building everything up front, the cost of builds is much lower. That's important because one of the things we've hit is if you want to update the version of SAM tools or something on biocontainers, you have to update basically all biocontainers or always mold biocontainers. You have to regenerate huge numbers of containers, which is very disruptive and very expensive. And so it's a big process and quite difficult. Here, you just stick in whatever tools you want. I want to add in multi-QC. I just search for multi-QC, add it, hit get container. It's just generated on demand. This one you can see no one has requested before because it's it's spinning here saying fetching container. So it's actually building this image for me right now. It still gives me the URI because that's predictable. So I can still copy that and start sticking that into software or whatever else. But the image itself is going to take two or three minutes to build in the back end. And then it will be available forever. So uh, that's secure containers. 
It's hosted on infrastructure paid for by AWS, which is why they have their logo, but it's usable by anyone, anywhere. I can run these containers on my local laptop, on an HPC, anywhere. There's no authentication required. And part of the reason we built a custom registry like this is that we can be in charge of it being um, reliable, which key.io is not always very reliable, and also has very high rate limits, and we control the cache, which we can't do with Docker Hub and other services. Um, and there's zero authentication requirement, which is not true for some stuff like ECL. You can also choose to build either Docker or Singularity natively, and you can choose what kind of um, architecture to build. So by default, it uses Linux AMD64. But if you want to run on, say, Graviton on AWS, you can select ARM, and it will just build the image using ARM. OK, so that's secure containers. This is nice for NF Core. In fact, it was that came out of a discussion about how we could use Wave for NF Core. It's particularly nice because his, his images last forever. And so we can put them into NF Core uh, pipelines and we can be confident that they are reproducible because every person who runs that pipeline in the future will be fetching the same image from the underlying community registry underneath this. So we can kind of be more confident that it's reproducible. Okay. Any questions? Um, some cool other stuff here. Well, that one failed. Sometimes stuff will fail because things might be incompatible or maybe they're not ready for ARM or whatever. Um, a couple of other cool things. If you look at completed builds here, you can see exactly how it was created with the Conda environment file, the Docker file, and also the full Docker build log. And also it gives you security scans and stuff. So there's quite a lot of information you also get about these builds. Okay, let's dive into some command line stuff. So um, web interfaces are great for playing around, um, doing one-off builds, uh, explaining how this works. It's kind of nice and visual, which is good for this kind of thing. Um, but obviously, this is not great if you want to start using this in a pipeline, which already has like 50 different processes. You don't want to have to be clicking around 50 different times uh, or messing around with software versions and stuff like that. At the moment, this only supports single software version. That's one of the things we're going to implement very soon is being able to pick multiple versions here. But um, but we're bioinformaticians. We don't like GUIs. <laughs> we like uh, the command line. So we're kind of the next part of this talk is all about the command line. And this is more why I'm going back to the stuff I discussed last week, if you were around for that one. So without further ado, swoosh, I'm going to go into the terminal. Hopefully, everyone can now see my terminal. And I'm in an empty directory. Yes, we can see your terminal. Wonderful. Thank you, Fran. So um, there's a few different ways we can we can play with containers here. Um, the first kind of most kind of obvious way to do it is to use the Wave command line interface, um, which I should have showed when I still had the browser visible. So if I go to GitHub, Secure Labs, Wave CLI, uh, it's another open source package here. Um, then this is a command line tool specifically for interacting with the Wave backend. Um, and you can install it using Homebrew if you're on Mac, which I am. So you just copy that brew and install command. Um, and then you, you get it installed locally. So I can do Wave minus minus help. And it shows me all the kind of different stuff I can do with it. Lots of flags. Um, the simplest thing I'm going to do is... Um, I didn't prep the environment file here, or I've deleted the file that I prepped, um, is I can do, I can ask for a new image in the same way, exactly the same way that I did with the web interface a second ago. So I'm going to do wave minus minor uh, conda, what is it, conda package? Yeah, wave. Wave minus minus conda package. And then I'm going to ask for... What was it? BWA. I think I asked for no BCF tools. Uh, BCF Bioconda BCF tools, and then do minus minus conda package, SAM tools, and see what happens. So it has returned exactly as the web interface did. It returned a Docker URI straight away, and I can do Docker pull. And I'm not running Docker locally, apparently. <laughs> so I need to start up the daemon, but it would work. Uh, it, would, it would download that Docker image and I could um, CD into it and it would kind of do all the right stuff. And I could check that there is both BCF tools and SAM tools within this Docker image. 
So the command line is great just for replicating exactly what we did with the web, um, but locally. Now, there's a couple of key things here. When I did this, this used a regular wave backend. It didn't use secure containers. So you can see this URL is not this quite the same as the one we had generated over here. Uh, this one is community.wave.secure.io. And this one is just wave.secure.io. So this is using regular wave with a 72 hour cache where it's built on demand. Uh, if I want to use the um, same as secure containers, I do freeze. And now it's given me the community.wave.secure.io um, URI. So now it's using secure containers. Secure containers where you get Rift's free cache forever has a couple of limitations. It only works with Conda and PyPI, uh, Python package index. Uh, it doesn't work with cost, custom Docker files, whereas using regular wave does work with custom Docker files. That's the main one you need to be aware of. Okay, so that's good. Um, when we kicked off secure containers, I did a bunch of work to pre-populate the cache and was, this was really great because I could just kind of stick it in the bash script uh, and generate a whole load of, of, um, of images very quickly. I can also do singularity and it will give me a an ORAS one, which is the OCI compliant spec for singularity images. Um, so this is now a natively built singularity image. And very soon there'll be a, a way to get an HTTPS link for this as well as just a flat file, which I can use with wget. Um, and yeah, finally, I can also do stuff like platform equals Linux um, 64. So all the same features that we had uh, on the web interface. And you can see when I use ARM, it gives me a different container hash here. Okay, that's good. Uh, but there's only an easier way to do that with Nextflow containers. Um, or I've already got a pipeline set up, such as the uh, next the NF core. RNA seek pipeline, for example, which may have many, many containers in it. I don't have to go through manually trying to pick all of those out. So final player on our command line uh, stage is Nextflow inspect. Uh, I can do Nextflow help inspect and it shows some of the stuff it does. Um, th basically what running Nextflow inspect does is it previews uh, a pipeline. I'm going to kick it off just because um, it's takes just a moment. In fact, I'm going to do it into a, into a file. So in this case, I'm running it as if it's Nextflow run. Uh, it's taking the VNF core RNA seq pipeline. It's basically sort of doing a, a preview run. Uh, notice I have to do minus profile test and minus minus out there results and everything as if I was running the pipeline because it is building the DAG and everything. And if I didn't do that stuff, it would complain that it, you know, the parameters didn't validate the same way as if I run the pipeline. But if I look at inspect results, you can see it's now given me a JSON output file with every single process name which it came across uh, and all the containers which are encoded within the pipeline. So this is nothing to do with Wave now. This is just what was hard coded into the pipeline already. So that's pretty cool. That's a generally useful thing for anybody just wanting to download images or whatever. Um, you can get all the images in a pipeline uh, in one big file. There's a lot of duplication in here. Um, so we can also use a bit of magic with JQ if we want to, to see this in a slightly easier way. Um, so that was just JQ um, with this file. JQ is a, a command line tool for working with JSON files if you've not used it before. Um, and I can also then pass it into, uh, I can sort that output and make it unique. And then, then the list becomes much, much smaller because many of the processes within the RNA-seq pipeline are using the same images same base images. So this is a list of unique images that was returned. Uh, and you can see we, have a, we have a question. Um, cool. Simon is asking if these are all the conditional images too. Oh, Simon, you led me on to my next point perfectly. <laughs> so um, what I was going to, uh, literally the words about to escape my mouth were, this list doesn't look long enough. And you'd be right. Because when I did that next inspect command, it ran it the pipeline as if it was running the pipeline. It, it did a preview run, which means that uh, in this case, I am only using um, uh, SAM tools and salmon. There's no high sat two here, for example, which RNA seq pipeline can do. So if I rerun the next inspect command here, but this time I say minus minus aligner high sat two. Uh, so I change the parameters, I change the conditional logic within the pipeline, um, but otherwise do everything exactly the same. It will give me a slightly different list of container images. Um, and now we do have HiSat2 in there. 
Is there no way just to download all the containers in one go? Uh, not using Nextflow Inspect currently, no. It's something I'm aware of, something we discuss periodically. It is kind of difficult to do within Nextflow language because Nextflow language passes all the scripts and under understands all the scripts. Um, the best way at the moment is using NF core download, which uses horrible regular expressions just to pass all the scripts. Um, but um, your mileage may vary. I would still like to get to a point where we can do next phone inspect and it would grab everything irrespective of whether it's used or not. Um, that's something I'd like to work towards, but it's not not available today. Um, okay. So that's next flow inspect. Do, 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 do. So the next thing then is this, ah, uh, not prepared enough. Um, now I'm going to create a new config file. Um, and I'm just going to load up VS code quickly in here. Go away. And I'm going to make a new file in here called nextflow config. And I'm going to say wave uh, enabled equals true. Um, then I'm also going to do wave strategy um, conda. So this does a couple of things. Firstly, it enables the wave plugin within Nextflow, which works pretty much exactly the same way as the wave CLI to tell it to uh, go and use the wave service to provision my containers for me. And I'm telling it to use the conda as strategy. So that means I could also specify kind of Docker files and containers here, but here I'm saying, ignore anything you find about existing images or containers, just look at the Nextflow conda declarations. Um, and we'll see what it does. Hopefully it'll work. Um, last time I did this the other week, I had all the Nextflow config files pre-prepared and apparently I've forgotten to dig those out this time. But hopefully uh, what we'll find then is that when this command runs, it will return all the wave.secure.io um, images for everything in, in this branch, this logic of the pipeline. Um, so it'll be the same kind of Nextflow inspect output, but now it won't be the hard-coded pack, pack condo images so I docker images, now it'll be the wave.secure.io. And it worked, brilliant. I'm going to do one more change. I'm going to do wave.freeze equals true. And now this is telling wave, just as we did before on the command line, uh, store, build those images if needed and put them into um, put them into the, container, the community con container registry. Actually, I tell a lie because it won't build them. It will just return the URLs for them. If I want to also build them, then I can add a flag to Nextflow inspect, which is dash concretize, which apparently is an engineering term, software engineering term. I've never heard it before this. Um, and then that tells the Wave plugin within Nextflow to actually request the images be built properly rather than just previewing what the URL would be. And if we do that, it will probably be super slow um, because I think it will wait for all the builds to work. But we can try it. Concretize. Oops. Okay, I spelled it wrong. Ah, I'm not going to faff around with it. But you get the idea. It should go off and think about it and build all those images for us and then return the URLs. Right. I've pretty much gone over twice as long as I should have done. Um, I haven't done all the stuff that I did last time with all my commands, but um, last time I gave a bite-sized talk, I paste, I dumped the bash file um onto the slack channel afterwards so if you're interested in this this command line stuff a bit more you can go and have a look i did a bit more playing around with actually like going into docker images and checking the version and changing versions and and kind of doing stuff like that but hopefully this gives you an overview of kind of the different different parts different components of this ecosystem and how they work together and how we can use nextflow inspect to bulk get um docker images built for the nextflow pipelines so the final part really then is it mostly a question to the rest of the community, which is, um, does this seem like a good idea? Is this returning value? I hope, I hope it is. Um, my argument for returning value is it is now much easier to generate uh, Docker images, especially multi-package, um, that we have better control over the registry itself. Hopefully it's more, re uh, more reliable um, and more kind of base images and more, more up-to-date and everything. Um, and hopefully it's got better support for native Singularity, native Docker, um, and the different architectures. 
Now, my suggestion for how we use it within NF Core is we build up a continuous integration um, in, in infrastructure where when you as a developer are pushing new code for um, for your pipeline, you basically just write the conda spec and you forget about containers altogether. And then on the CI backend, we automatically fetch container images from, from secure um, containers and hard code those URLs into a config file. It'd be nice not to have to do that, but we want NF core pipelines to be able to run offline. And at the moment, I don't see any other way how to do it because otherwise you have to go and ask the wave service to return the Docker URI. So until it's possible to get this, this container URI, uh, without going online, then I think we still have to hard code them. But hopefully we can separate that out from the rest of the next flow code as much as possible and make it a fairly automated process. Um, and so, yeah, I'd like to, and like there's some open questions like, should we bulk do this for every NF core module in one go or get new images for 1200 uh, modules or however many there are today? Uh, or should we do it incrementally? Um, and are there any things that people are worried about or concerned about or things we should consider? And um, with those open questions, I will happily open the floor. Thank you, Phil. So um, are there any questions from the audience at this moment that are not answered? Also, just anything about Singularity or Wave or Docker. Yeah, we have a question from Thomas. What directive do I use with the processes to use a wave container? Container like Docker or Singularity? Yeah, so you've got a couple of options. Um, there's basically, um, you can use, what I was kind of advocating for is not using a container, you just use Conda. So Conda and then MultiQC or whatever. And then you turn, turn in the next way config, you say wave.enabled equals true. And then basically, next and the wave plugin will convert that conda spec into a container spec automatically for you. You don't have to write anything saying container. If you want to, you can use your own container images and then wave will do that other thing where it does acts as like as a proxy and fetches that the container that you specify from key.io or wherever and redirect that via wave. Um, but my suggestion is that we don't do that in NF Corp. Mm. Uh, Simon, you can also unmute yourself um, if you want to ask the question in person. Okay. <laughs> Um, thanks. That's an interesting talk. So this requires everything to be on Conda or Bioconda or Python, like however, wherever the it, the platform's getting the Python packages from. Is that right? The secure containers currently, certainly at least a web interface, um, but everything I think re requires you to get request packages either from Conda. It can be any Conda channel. It doesn't have to be Bioconda. Or Conda Forge. The search defaults to those two just to make it on the web interface, just to make it fast. But we can get packages from any Conda channel. You just give it, um, you can give it a Conda environment file or, or, or the channel spec, um, or yeah, the Python package index. Um, this is an artificial limitation. Um, the reason we did it this way is because we don't want people storing their entire video library as a Docker image for free hosting <laughs> or sticking malware on our registry or whatever else. So it's kind of a security slash like anti-abuse policy, basically. Um, technically, you can, could probably get stuff on Conda, but anyway. Um, so that's an artificial limitation. If it's a problem for NF Core, we can probably in the future have NF Core specific policies. Like if it's coming from NF Core CI, we're like considered trusted and so we're allowed to do more stuff and then we could then you could build from a custom docker file um so next if you read the docs on on wave on the next flow docs you can see that um you can just have a docker file in your um pipeline repository and and wave will pick up the docker file build it on demand and return that image so if we need to do stuff like that in the future we can do and um, we're also hoping to add support in the future nearish future for spac which is another package registry. Typically you use more in kind of physics and chemistry, but um, we're starting to get more focus on the biological sciences. What just um what, what about R packages? So all of bi all bioconductor packages are automatically packaged into Bioconda. So anything in Bioconductor should already be available via Conda. Um if that's not enough. I would love to hear some examples of our packages and that's maybe something we could build up. One of one of the things I really would like, and I think there are some so I, I want the tidy verse in R, 
the, the functionality in there as well as the bioconductor like can the, the yeah. bioconductor actual package i find this really frustrating trying to write our code just in base r yeah and is tidyverse is that distributed through just regular cran or is that coming from a different yeah, it's just on cran I'm fairly sure there is a container that already exists with it. So if I can go this and this, then yeah, it will. If somebody's built a container, just sort of the utility packages, mm. if, they're, if they're somewhere on Bioconda or Conda, then they'll work, right? Yeah. Um, if so, I mean, if there's a Conda package for Tidyverse already, that should already be there. Um, if longer term, I think it'd be interesting to look into whether we can support CRAN as another package registry. Uh, I did actually in the very early proof of concept for um for secure containers, I was like, buy containers, CRAN, CPAN for Perl packages, Python package index, like just homebrew, you know, just think of every possible kind of uh, software registry. Um, but in terms of kind of being practical, we limited it to Bioconda and PyPI in the initial release. But um, but I think it'd be really interesting to sort of see if we could support CRAN as a first, uh, as this kind of a top tier support. Um, what might be difficult is mixing arbitrary R packages with other pieces of software from Conda and things. But um, but if if you wanted a container that just had R packages from CRAN and built from them like a relevant base image, um, then that might be something we could build in the future. Uh, there's another question from Istvan. Sorry if I butchered that name. Uh, would Conda Forge or Tidyverse work? Maybe you look at it yourself. Yeah, almost certainly. If that exists, <laughs> that, that, that's on Conda because it's Conda Forge. So anything in Conda should already work. So if there is a Conda Forge package for our Tidyverse already, uh, then you should or you should just be able to request that for, um, for security containers. It should just give you an image straight away. Should we try it? Yeah. Let's see what happens. What's it called? Uh, tidy verse. Okay, Conda Forge R Tidy Verse. Okay, oh, look, someone else had already done it. Back on the 28th of May, someone had already requested it, so it's already existed. So there you go. I'll paste the image into the chat. <laughs> We'll see if it actually works. <laughs> Great. Do we have any more questions or suggestions? It doesn't seem like it. Then I would like to thank you very much, Phil, for also repeating some of the content from last time. Uh, and I would also like to thank the audience for uh, listening in, in this, this today's bite-sized talk. Thank you very much and goodbye.